Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to crochet this ribbed button down cardigan. This cardigan features a round neck and an oversized fit and I'll be making it in a size small. You can find the free written pattern from sizes extra small to 5 extra large on my blog. The link is down below in the description bar. You will need DK weight yarn. All of the yarn amounts for the different sizes are listed in the blog post. A 5mm crochet hook, some stitch markers, a darning needle, and some scissors. I'll also be using some large buttons and they measure about 3cm in diameter. Today I'm using 4 buttons, but if you'd like a more secure opening, I'd recommend using 5. We're going to start with the back panel and to begin, create a slip knot. Insert your hook into the loop. Chain 72. All of the pieces for this pattern are worked lengthways, and that means the foundation chain runs the length of the cardigan, not the width. Once you have 72 chains, we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. To double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Double crochet in each chain until the end of the row. At the end of row 1, you should have 70 stitches in total. Turn your work. The majority of this pattern is worked in two different types of rows, and we're going to refer to row 2 as the base slip stitch row. We're going to be working stitches into the back loops. So normally when you insert your hook into the stitch, you pick up both the front and the back loops, so two strands of yarn. When you pick up the back loop, you only pick up the strand of yarn furthest away from you. So to start row 2, chain 1. Throughout this pattern, chain 1 and chain 2 do not count as a stitch. We're going to back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. So insert your crochet hook into the back loop, yarn over it, and pull through. Keep your slip stitches nice and loose, it'll make them a lot easier to crochet into. When you have one stitch left in the row, just place a normal slip stitch. When you insert your hook into the stitch, make sure you have both the front and back loop. You'll have 70 stitches in total. Turn your work. For rows 3 and 4, you're just going to repeat row 2. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row and turn your work. And for row 4, just repeat the base slip stitch row again, which is the same as row 2. And for row 5, we're going to crochet the base double crochet row. To begin, chain 2. Back loop double crochet in each stitch until the last stitch. You'll be able to see the ribbing to start to form. Remember that these pieces are worked lengthways, so this is how the ribbing will fall when you wear the cardigan. When you have one stitch left, double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 70 stitches in total. 
Turn your work. We're now going to repeat rows 2 to 5 until the end of row 89. So you'll crochet 3 base slip stitch rows for every 1 base double crochet row. And you're going to repeat those 4 rows until the end of row 89. At the end of row 89, this is what the back panel will look like. Fasten off. And we'll now begin the first front panel. For the first front panel, we're going to repeat the exact same instructions for the back panel until the end of row 30. So at the end of row 30, you should have just finished a base slip stitch row. We're now going to crochet the neckline decrease. To start row 1 of the front panel decrease, we're going to chain 1. We're going to back loop slip stitch in each stitch until we have 10 stitches left in the row. When you have 10 stitches left in the row, you'll have 60 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 2, we're just going to repeat a base slip stitch row. The decreases will form sharp corners or steps along the edge of your neckline. Don't worry about these corners because they'll all be hidden once we add on the neckline ribbing. And then for row 3, we're going to repeat a base double crochet row. Place a double crochet in the last stitch of the row. And you'll still have 60 stitches in total. You'll start to see the corners forming. Turn your work. For row 4, repeat a base slip stitch row. For row 5, we're going to decrease again. So chain 1 and back loop slip stitch until you have 3 stitches left in your row. You'll have 57 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 6, you'll repeat a base slip stitch row. For row 7, you'll repeat a base double crochet row. You'll have 57 stitches in total. For row 8, you'll repeat a base slip stitch row. With row 9, we're going to decrease for the last time. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch until you have 2 stitches left in the row. You'll have 55 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 10, we're going to repeat a base slip stitch row. For row 11, we're going to repeat a base double crochet row. You should have 55 stitches at the end of the row, and 41 rows in total. Fasten off. We're now going to crochet the second front panel. To start the second front panel, create a slip knot. Insert your crochet hook into the loop. Chain 57. To start row 1, we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. Double crochet in each stitch until the end of the row. You'll have 55 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 2, we're just going to repeat the base slip stitch row. And for row 3, we're going to start to increase. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. We're going to slip stitch in the last stitch of the row.
and then chain 3. So in total we'll have 55 stitches and 3 chains. To start row 4 we're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the next chain. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You'll have 57 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 5, we'll repeat a base double crochet row. Make sure to place a normal double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You'll have 57 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 6, we'll repeat a base slip stitch row. For row 7, we're going to increase again. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch across, slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. We're now going to chain 4. So in total, you'll have 57 stitches and 4 chains. Turn your work. To start row 8, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in each chain. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You'll have 60 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 9, we'll repeat a base double crochet row. You'll have 60 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 10, we'll repeat a base slip stitch row. In row 11, we're going to increase again. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch across, slip stitch in the last stitch of the row, and then chain 11. You'll have 60 stitches and 11 chains in total. Turn your work. In row 12, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in each chain. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You'll have 70 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 13, repeat a base double crochet row. At the end of row 13, you'll have 70 stitches in total. Turn your work. Now you're going to repeat the first front panel rows of 2 to 5 until the end of row 41. So you're going to repeat 3 base slip stitch rows and then 1 base double crochet row until the end of row 41. When you're at the end of row 41, fasten off. We're now going to crochet the sleeves. So to begin, create a slip knot. Insert your crochet hook into the loop. Chain 65. 
To start row 1, we're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the next 11 chains. And then we're going to double crochet in each chain until the end of the row. In total, you should have 64 stitches. Turn your work. For rows 2 to 4, we're going to repeat the base slip stitch row. To see the back loops, I always turn my work so that the top of the stitches are facing me. As you crochet row 3, you'll start to notice that the slip stitch portion is a lot thinner than the double crochet portion. The slip stitch end of the sleeve will form the cuff ribbing. This is what your sleeve will look like at the end of row 4. To start row 5, we're going to chain 1. Back loop slip stitch into the first 12 stitches. Once you have 12 slip stitches, back loop double crochet across. Double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You'll have 64 stitches in total. Turn your work. We're going to repeat the sleeve rows 2 to 5 until the end of row 57. At the end of row 57, fasten off. Fold your sleeve in half and make sure that the wrong side, the side without ribbing, is facing you. And then we're going to whip stitch the edges of the sleeve together. Repeat all of these steps for your second sleeve. We're now going to assemble the cardigan, so I've placed the front panels on top of the back panels and make sure that the wrong side is facing you, so the rib side should be on the inside of the cardigan. Whip stitch the tops of the shoulder seams together. I find that for the stitch you get a neater finish if you insert your needle into the center of the double crochets. Once you've sewn the shoulders together, we're now going to sew the sides of the body together. We're going to sew up the sides of the cardigan, leaving a gap for the sleeves. You can use a stitch marker to mark the bottom of the sleeve. Whip stitch up the sides of the body. I'm only picking up the back loops to create a neat finish.
Once you've sewn the edges of the body panels together, we're now going to sew on the sleeves. You can use a stitch marker to hold the sleeve in place. Whip stitch the edges of the sleeve to the body of the cardigan. Once you've sewn everything together, we'll now crochet the hemline ribbing. Just as a note, the hemline ribbing is optional, so if you'd rather have a raw edge at the bottom of your cardigan, you can just skip ahead to the front panel ribbing. To crochet the ribbing, create a slip knot. Insert your crochet hook into the loop. Chain 9. Once you have 9 chains, to start row 1, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in each chain until the end. You should have 8 stitches in total. Turn your work. To start row 2, chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You should have 8 stitches in total. Turn your work. Repeat row 2 until your ribbing equals the width of the back and two front panels. Once your ribbing is the desired length, fasten off. We're now going to whip stitch the hemline ribbing to the hem of the cardigan. You can use a stitch marker to hold your ribbing in place. Once you've sewn on the hemline ribbing, turn your cardigan inside out so that the right side is facing you. So we've added the hemline ribbing, and we're now going to crochet the ribbing for the front panels. We're going to start with the second front panel. So when you're wearing the cardigan, the second front panel should be on the left side. You're going to repeat the exact same ribbing steps, and repeat row 2 until your ribbing equals the length of the inside edge of the front panel. Whip stitch the ribbing to the second front panel. Once you've sewn the ribbing to the second front panel, we're going to open up the cardigan to space out the buttons. Place the first button to the left of the edge of the ribbing. This button will be sewn onto the neckline ribbing. Place your second button at the bottom of the ribbing and space out the rest of your buttons evenly in between. Use a stitch marker to mark the center of the buttons along the ribbing. Repeat the ribbing instructions until the ribbing is long enough to reach the first stitch marker. And now we're going to crochet a buttonhole row. So chain 1, slip stitch into the first two stitches. Chain 4. Skip 4 stitches and then slip stitch into the next 2 stitches. Make sure that your button fits in the buttonhole. You want your buttons to be quite a snug fit, so to make your buttonhole smaller, slip stitch 3, chain 3, Skip 3 stitches and then slip stitch 2. Also double check that your buttonhole lines up with the stitch marker. 
You're now going to repeat row 2 until your ribbing reaches the next stitch marker. Once the ribbing reaches the second stitch marker, repeat a buttonhole row. You'll repeat this until your ribbing equals the length of the second front panel ribbing on the cardigan. Once your ribbing is the correct length, fasten off. Sew your ribbing onto the first front panel. And this is what the cardigan looks like when both front panels have ribbing. We're now going to crochet the neckline ribbing. For the neckline ribbing, you're going to repeat the exact same ribbing steps until your ribbing is about 3 cm or 1 and a quarter inches shorter than the head opening. So I crocheted my ribbing until it was about 59 cm or 23 and a quarter inches long. A good way to check that your ribbing is the correct length is to pin it into place and the last row should line up with the centre of the buttonholes. Once you've checked the length of your ribbing, we're now going to crochet a buttonhole row. If you change the size of your buttonholes on the front panel ribbing, crochet the same size buttonhole on the neckline ribbing. Once you've crocheted your buttonhole, repeat row 2 of the ribbing until the ribbing fits around the head opening. So I crocheted my ribbing until it measured 62 centimeters or 24 and a quarter inches long. Once your ribbing fits around the head opening, fasten off and then whip stitch it into place. You want your ribbing to create a smooth curve or round neckline. So when you reach the corners that are sticking out behind the ribbing, just whip stitch directly over them and they'll become small bumps that won't be noticeable once you wear the cardigan. So when you've finished sewing the neckline ribbing, you'll see the small bumps on the inside, but once you flip the ribbing over, the bumps aren't noticeable. And now we're going to sew on the buttons, so line up the buttons with the buttonholes, and then sew them into place.
double check the button placement and make sure that they can fit in the buttonholes. If your neckline is ruffling, you've placed your buttons too close together. And if your neckline is pulling or puckering, you've placed your buttons too far apart. Once you're happy with your button placement, weave in all of your ends. Steam block your cardigan. And you've finished your rib button down cardigan.